Welcome to the Survivor to Thriver show with your happiness expert, Samia Bano. Are you a survivor of abuse or other trauma? Are you tired of feeling stuck, silent, and stressed all the time? This is the podcast people from all over the world join in to learn exactly how to stop suffering and start living with more inner peace and joy. Are you ready to eliminate suffering from your life and transform from a survivor to thriver? Then congratulations, you are in the right place. Let's get started. Hey, welcome to the Survivor to Thriver show. Yesterday I shared with you how I finally broke through the silence around my being a survivor of child sexual abuse. The first time that I broke through that silence and the impact that it had on me. How I walked out of the session with uh, our psychologist on campus having just told her about what had happened and allowing her to, you know, provide me finally with that help and support and feedback that I'd been so desperate for and so desperately needed in my life, Um, you know, finally allowing um, that the, the light of that that help and, and guidance and support to enter my life and, and shedding the darkness of the silence. Wow, it was a huge moment of breakthrough, a huge moment of healing. And, um, you know, as I walked out of that session, um, <laughs> I had this huge smile on my face that I couldn't contain. And it was an amazing amazing thing just to experience myself smiling like that because I had honestly forgotten how to smile you know um, to the point where I remember I didn't like take uh, I, I had I didn't used to like getting my pictures taken anymore you know because I felt like my pictures didn't come out good. And one of the reasons they didn't come out good was because I always looked really sad and really serious. And I mean, actually, I personally thought I looked okay. Like, yes, I looked serious and uh, in my pictures and I thought I looked fine, serious, but people were always commenting. Like whenever they saw my pictures, they would comment on, how sad and serious I looked. And then they would comment on and start asking me questions about why wasn't I smiling and smile, 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 smile. And I just couldn't do it. I'd forgotten how to smile. And I remember there were a few pictures where I tried to smile, you know, and it just came out looking just ridiculous. I felt ridiculous, and the, I, I, when I saw my pictures with, where I was attempting to smile, I thought I looked ridiculous. So I just, you know, just uh, decided to just avoid being in pictures, avoid getting my pictures taken, and uh, you know that's how it was. And and this one day now, like wow, I had this smile on my face that I couldn't com- contain and felt completely natural there and it was an expression of this this joy that was bubbling up from within me and it was just so amazing to experience because it just had been so long since I had felt that kind of 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 joy and happiness and even peace, this inner peace in in my heart, in my life. (sighs) 
it was a truly, truly amazing day. You know, before I go on uh, telling you about what else happened and the amazing progress that I started to make in my healing process after this, uh, this breakthrough that I had, the breakthrough, uh, the breaking through of my silence. Um, I want to take some time today to reflect on some of the lessons, uh, really important lessons uh, that we can learn from this part of my story, okay? Uh, and one of those very important lessons is this idea of how much time may be needed to heal for someone. And the answer is that there is actually no right answer to this uh, because it's a very individual experience, okay? Uh, there are certain aspects to the healing process that are universal, that pretty much everyone who has experienced some kind of trauma in their life, you know, we, we notice that they go through certain uh, stages of the healing process, certain experiences, certain um, perspectives that they develop, and they're pretty common among survivors. But then, at the same time, there are certain aspects of the healing process and certain aspects of our experience um, as we go through the healing process that are very individual and unique to us. And the amount of time required to go through the different stages of the healing process is one of those elements that it's different for each and every one of us because there are so many different uh, things that have an impact on, on this time factor. So for example, in my case, and by the way, you know, um, um, the, here's the other thing, that no matter uh, what the time frame is uh, that a particular survivor takes, to go through their healing process. Uh, there's no blame or judgment or shame around that, right? You will take the amount of time that you need to take, okay? Um, because we each do the best we can, we make the best decisions that we can with what we know and what we have. And that's what I was doing too, right? So. Uh, in my case, for example, one of the reasons why it took me as long as it did uh, to reach this particular point of breakthrough was, um, well, there were two main reasons. The first reason was that because I was so young at the time that I went through this traumatic experience, I had not as yet developed the skills for, for, for example, I, I had not, I did not have the skills for managing my emotions effectively. I had not yet developed uh, uh, the, the effective skills of how to communicate my feelings effectively and clearly and um, articulately, right? Uh, uh, so, so I, I was missing a lot of these, these kinds of crucial skills, skill sets. But the other thing was also the environment. You know, we, uh, the, if you have a supportive environment, you're going to find it much easier and much faster to be able to uh, go through your healing process and to reach out for the help and support that we all need in order to progress through your healing process, right? Uh, and, and some of the things that I needed 
uh, you know, in, in my environment, like for me to feel that an environment was safe, for me to reach out for help and, and, and to share with somebody what I was going through, uh, included, you know, knowing that uh, if I shared that I wouldn't be blamed and judged or feeling reasonably confident that I wouldn't be blamed and judged, feeling reasonably confident that the person I told would believe me, that they would know um, how to help me, that they would understand what I, I was going through, right? And also, like, in my case, because... The person who abused me was a member of my family. I also had huge concerns around uh, the impact that the revelation might have on my family relationships, right? So there were a lot of these um, barriers in my way that until I had reasonable answers around how... um, I could manage these concerns and I couldn't feel safe to, to break through the silence, right? And then I finally found myself in an environment where I, could, I did have reasonable answers to how these concerns could be managed. That is when it became realistic and possible for me to break through the silence and I did. Okay, so again, this idea that we do the best we can with what we know and what we have. So let's not fall into these cycles of blaming and judging ourselves or our loved ones that we may be witnessing, uh, 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 that, uh, you know, uh, if, if it's our loved one who has experienced some trauma and we are witnessing uh, their, their, them going through the process of healing or trying to cope uh, with, with the trauma in their lives. Let's not get into these cycles of blaming and, and, and judging. Instead, shift your, let's shift our focus away from the problem and towards the solution, right? So it's like, okay. Remember, I'm pretty sure I talked about this in one of the earlier episodes. If you're, whatever you're feeling, right, there is a validity to those feelings. You're not going crazy. You're not feeling the way you're feeling because there's something wrong with you. Your feelings are, in fact, your friends. Your feelings are your friends. And they're trying to give you a message, right? And that message is very valid message. It's a very valuable message. When we have positive feelings, our feelings are giving the message that we're headed in the right direction, we're doing things that are really working for us, that are really helping us. So do more of those so we can keep feeling good, right? That those good feelings are the positive feedback, that you're on the right track, do more of this. And similarly, when we experience negative feelings, those negative feelings are just simply giving us the feedback that we are headed on the wrong track or that there's something that we need that we're missing and we're not getting. So pay attention and see, okay, well, what is it that I need? What is it that I'm missing? And how can I get it? Right? So you can do this for yourself and you can do this for your loved ones when you find them struggling. So avoid blame and judgment. Allow yourself the time that you need. Be patient with yourself. Uh, you know, in allowing yourself the time you need to go through your process. And if you find yourself uh, wanting to move forward at a faster pace, or if you find yourself wanting to change things 
from the way they are. Respect your feelings. Listen to your feelings. See what they're telling you about what's missing, where you may be going wrong. And when you are able to figure that out, when you're tap into that wisdom, that inner wisdom, uh, then you know you you'll be able to find the appropriate solutions for how to move forward for yourself, just like I did. And uh, again, um, you know your inner self will be your best guide. You know if you are the support person if it's your loved one who's a survivor look don't um like trust them to know right when it's the right time for them to take the next step and to move on you can encourage them but don't force them ever into doing something they're not ready to do okay and similarly for yourself don't force yourself to do something that you don't feel ready to do, okay? Trust your inner knowing, trust your gut, trust your uh, intuition and your instincts. So I'm going to go ahead, wrap up right here for today, pick up where we leave off today, tomorrow. And um, until then, remember to connect with me, give me your feedback your comments i love to hear from you just go to my website on the academy of thriving.com and you can contact me through our contact us page there until i see you tomorrow i wish you lots of peace and joy